Okay, so this is a more challenging question. Uh, let's have a look and see if we can do it. Part of the function f is sketched below. So here we get the sketch. There we go. And uh, then they tell us for which value or values of x is the derivative equal to 0. Remember the derivative is equal to 0 at the turning point. So at that point there and at that point there. Now for both of these values we have the x coordinates. They were given. So for which x values? For x equal to negative 5 and for x equal to negative a third. For which values of x is the derivative greater than 0? Now when a number is greater than 0 it means it's positive. If the derivative is positive, it means the gradient is positive. So the question is actually asking for which x values do we have positive gradients? Okay, so you'll see we have positive gradients along here. So what it's actually asking is where um, where can I walk to be walking uphill? So anyone, any person walking on this stretch all along here any person walking on this part here would be walking uphill if you're walking in the reading direction okay so what x values corresponds to this part well it's the values between negative five and negative a third so the answer here is for which x values do we have the derivative greater than zero for all of the x values from negative 5 up to negative a third okay and I'm writing interval notation should I use block as uh, square brackets or round brackets well it didn't ask equal to if it was equal to we would add our square brackets because that that is what the previous question asked when was it equal to 0 this one asked when is it greater than 0 and therefore we will use our uh, smooth round brackets good they are excluded therefore draw a sketch of the derivative fx indicating the correct x-intercepts on the graph with not a points with points and an approximate shape okay so we must draw the derivative we have absolutely no information with regard to what f of x is we don't know the the formula uh, and yet we are told to draw the derivative mm, okay how are we going to do that well so far we know the derivative equal to zero we have to draw this and we solved two x values that means we have already found the x intercepts for the derivative. Why? Because we made the derivative equal to zero. Whenever we make a function equal to zero we are working out its x-intercepts. So we already have the x-intercepts. Now we just need to know what type of shape is it. Well, we know that f of x is a cubic polynomial so there would be an x cubed, there would be an x square, there would be blah blah blah, all of the x's. And we know that when we take the derivative we subtract one from every exponent. So the highest exponent that we'll have for the derivative would be a power 2, which means that the shape of the derivative would be a parabola. So, so far we know it's a parabola shape either that direction or this direction. Okay, and we already know where it's going to intercept the axis, okay, the x coordinate axis. Okay, so, so far we know that. Now all we need to know, because all they said was we should draw, indicating the x-intercepts, which we already have, and uh, an approximate shape. So it doesn't have to be the exact, we don't need to know the turning point is, is, is the point. We just need to show is it an upward or a downward slope. Okay, so let's go and look at this function, f of x. So we know that the coefficient is of x squared is going to determine the derivative, uh, the direction of the derivative. 
If it's positive, it would be the positive, the smiling face. If it's negative, it would be this shape. Now, where does the coefficient here come from? Well, it is the three times whatever is in front here. So, if this is positive, that would be positive, because three times a positive number would be positive. If it's negative, it would be negative. So, our uh, decision should be, is this the po a positive shape or a negative shape? Well, you will remember that the upside down n is a negative value, which means the coefficient of the x cube is negative, so the coefficient of the x square in the derivative will also be negative. I hope you followed me. So that this would be the shape. Our shape would look like this. There we go. There is our, sh our approximate graph that cuts the x-axis at negative 5 and at negative a third and here would be our y-axis at zero so y and x and there we go that's all we needed to do for this question even though it did take some insight to be able to draw the derivative um, an approximate derivative based on the sketch that we had okay last question the equation fx minus k has only one real root. So again, we don't know what the formula is for fx. It's x, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now we're subtracting k equal to 0. Now, whenever we subtract a number from a function, it moves that function up or down. Okay? So, if we were to to look at this, if this thing moves up or down, then at some point we will not cut the x's. In other words, at some point it would look like this. It would go down, turn at some point down here, come up, and then turn before it gets to the x-axis again, so that we only have this one root. Okay, and uh, that is if I subtract a number, it moves down. If I add a number, it goes up. Okay, so if I add a number, at some point, I, it, it could go like this. It comes down here, turns before it goes, goes up, 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 and I don't want to draw all over here, but I will. Okay, goes up, 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 turns, and cuts again. Okay, that's if I take this graph and I move it upwards. See, again, I only have one root. So... If I subtract a number, it goes down. If I add a number, it goes up. That's one way of looking at it, but I want to remove that and show you another way of looking at it. Okay, Another way of looking at this is to say if x equal to k has only one real root. See, I just added a k on both sides. What that means is that I draw a vertical line at the point k, and f of x cuts it only once. So I think that one is easier understood. If I draw a vertical, uh, sorry, not a vertical line, a horizontal line. If I draw a horizontal line, I see that sometimes the horizontal line cuts three times. Do you see? One, two, three, one, two, Three horizontal lines cut three times. If I draw it here, it will cut two times. One, two. If I draw it there, it will cut two times. So it will have two roots. But if I draw it any lower, okay, this function goes on, then it will cut only once. Or any higher, then it would cut only once. Okay, so you can see as soon as I go further than my my top part of the graph and here you can't see it but there's an A here this is an A and this is a B okay, at this point as soon as I go above A I don't cut my function more than uh, I only cut my function once If as soon as I go below B I only cut my function once so they ask me if I were to have this this equation and it only has one real root, what are the possible values of k? Okay, 
And now there's two ways of you can ask it. How far must I move it down? And how far must I move it up so that my graph cuts the x in uh, the x axis only once or just move the x axis okay where can I place my x axis so that um, or where can I draw a horizontal line uh, representing the x axis to only cut it once and if I draw my horizontal line greater than a and less than b that would be the case so when will I only have one real root if k is greater than a uh, or k is less than b and that's the answer